Hey everybody, it's Mr. Stewart here at Math We've Got This, and we are going to look at fraction multiplication in this screencast. Okay, so maybe as a starting point, what we can do is represent multiplication with an array. Now we've done that with whole numbers and other numbers, and we may not have seen that with fractions yet, but let's give it a try. So what I want you to notice, and I'm just going to grab a highlighter here, slightly different color. Okay, all right. So if we focus on this first fraction, so three-fifths. So have a look at the array that we have here. So you'll notice that this row here, followed by the second one, and then the third one of the five columns that we have possible represents our three-fifths. And then if you look in the other direction, I'll grab a different color here, you'll notice that this particular row here represents one of the one, two, three, four rows that we have, hence one quarter. So the overlapping region, so let's grab another color here. So you'll see here, just color this in a little bit. So this overlapping region represents the product of those two fractions. So when you multiply three fifths by one quarter, visually, this is the result. So how do we represent that? Okay, well, Let's put it this way. So you'll notice that the dimensions of the overlapping region, okay? So the entire array, as you can see here, is with width of four and we have a length of five units. So you can see that the total number of parts is five by four, which is what we have in our, in our uh, array. So those would be the total number of parts. So five multiplied by four. Now, if you look at the dimensions of the overlapping region, which I mentioned earlier, so that's this area here, you'll notice that what we have is three units in terms of its width by one unit long. So therefore, the area of that particular sector is three by one. So it's three by one, in relation to the total number of units, which is 20, or 5 by 4. So when you multiply 3 fifths by 1 quarter, you end up with 3 over 20. Which might be why, when you've heard someone say when you multiply fractions, you multiply the numerators together, then you multiply the denominators together, is why you were getting the answers that you were. Well, let's try it again with an array. So in this one here, let's look uh, at the columns first. Okay, so we're just going to kind of look at the columns moving across here. So what you'll notice that was that we have one, two, three, four, we have six columns. And of course, we have five of them that have been highlighted. So that would be represented by, and actually, let me grab a highlighter here, just so it's a little more clear as to what we're doing. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So that particular area of the whole would be five, six. Okay, so five, six, let's grab a better, better writing tool here. So that first fraction would be five over six. Now let's look in the other direction. So let's look at the, um, the rows. So we have one, two of three rows. I'm just going to highlight that as well in a different color. So these two rows of the three represents two thirds of the entire area. So what we're saying is that we are trying to multiply five sixths by two thirds. And the product of five sixths and two thirds will be this overlapping region here. So when we calculate that, notice that our array, of course, is three units this way and six units in this direction, that is horizontally. So that's where the six and the three come from. And we'd have to multiply six by three in order to get the total number of parts in that array, 
course, which is 18. And then if you look at the dimensions of the shaded region or the overlapping regions for those two fractions, we have dimensions of 2 and 5, which is representative of the numbers we have in our numerators. So we need to find the product of those, of the numerator. So that gives you 10 over 18. Last but not least, as you know, we reduce our fractions to lowest terms, and we have 5 ninths as a result. Okay, well, let's put that in practice. So, to multiply fractions, we multiply the numerators together, followed by the multiplication of the denominators. So 4 by 2, giving us 8, and that's over 6 by 5, or 30. And of course, in lowest terms, divide each by 2, top and bottom, giving us 4 fifteenths. Now, when you're working with fractions, or multiplication of fractions, what you might want to do, in fact, it goes for any operation, if you can see a way to simplify something first, saves us a little time later on, notice that 4 6 itself can be rewritten as 2 thirds. So if you reduce to lowest terms in the beginning, you won't have to do it in the end. So we'll multiply our numerators together. So 2 by 2 over 3 by 5. And again, similarly, final answer is 4 fifteenths. Okay. Now, you'll also be responsible for multiplying mixed numbers together. And we can also represent those with an array. Here is an array. It's not subdivided like the initial examples were, but it is helpful for understanding how we can approach multiplying mixed numbers. So you'll notice that across the top, we have eight units and three quarters. What that means is that the length of the whole rectangle would be eight and three quarters. So that's eight and three quarters units. And then in this dimension here, we have two units plus another two thirds. So the length of that would be two and two thirds. So what we're being asked ultimately is by calculating all the smaller areas, those are called partial products, we find the total area which ends up being the product of two fractions. So the product that we're looking for would be the answer to eight and three quarters multiplied by two and two thirds. Now, just for good measure, we'll go back and fill in our array using the dimensions. So this segment here or section would be eight by two thirds The one here, the small one here in the corner, I'll write this outside the box, would be 2 thirds multiplied by 3 quarters. And this one here, I'll write this outside the box as well, would be 2 by 3 quarters. So we could find each of those products independently and then add them together to find out the product of eight and three quarters multiplied by two and two thirds. So what we'll do is that in the next example, we'll give that a try. So we're gonna do this two ways. So one, we'll use an array, and then we'll use a different method. So let's sketch this out. So let's see, we have two and two fifths. I'm gonna make that, I'll put that here. So let's say that's two, this section here, we'll call this two fifths. So then our rectangle is going to be seven units long plus another half unit. So let's say that this is half. Okay, so it's a bit of a rough sketch, but that's fine. This is, uh, that's all that's really necessary. There's seven, we'll make this one half. Close this out. And then we'll get to business writing our partial products. So this one here would be two units by seven. Otherwise, 14. Here we have two fifths multiplied by seven. 
So that's seven copies of two fifths. So if we add two fifths to itself seven times, that would be 14 fifths. Over here, we'd have two multiplied by a half. That's a nice one, <laughs> equal to one. And then last but not least, the bottom right corner, we have two fifths multiplied by one half. So using rule for multiplying, multiplying fractions, that would be two by one, which is two. So I'm multiplying the numerators and the, the denominators multiplied five twos make 10. So this happens to also be one fifth when you reduce to lowest terms. So now what we need to do is we need to add together each of these partial products. So here we go. So that would mean that seven and a half multiplied by two and two fifths would be 14 plus the one plus 14 fifths plus one more fifth. Let's keep on going here. So 14 and one, we have 15 plus 15 fifths, right? So 14 fifths plus another one fifth is 15 fifths. So this is gonna turn out really nicely. So that means we have 15 plus three. So it turns out that when you multiply, there it is, there's the answer. When you multiply, seven and one half by two and two fifths, you end up with a total of 18. Now, just to double check, what we can do is we could use improper fractions to tackle these mixed numbers. So for instance, seven and one half, we know that to be, now seven whole is 14 halves plus another one half and then two and two fifths, so two in terms of fifths, that's gonna be the denominator of our fraction, so two would be 10 fifths. That makes two whole plus the two fifths that we had. So here we are converting our mixed numbers into improper fractions. So that's 15 halves being multiplied by 12 fifths. Now, knowing how to multiply fractions together, what we can do is we will take 15, we'll multiply that by 12, divide that by two times five, and it looks like, let me go over here to the right, I'm running out of room. So 15, 12, that's 180 divided by 10, and lo and behold, there it is, 18. So we multiply mixed numbers, using two methods. One, modeling with an array and finding the partial products, then adding them up, or converting to mixed numbers, and then, sorry, converting to improper fractions, and then performing the multiplication.